Before we go on to the manor, I must introduce you to Lady Catherine's cockatrix. Her lair is just ahead. He gestured toward the folly, whose edge they could just make out, around the bend in the road. Walker has told me of her, Miss Elizabeth peeked through the window. He has told you? Walker never spoke of Kate to anyone but him. A shriek from the folly pierced the air, and a large black mass of feathers flapped toward them. Kate was a glorious creature in the air. Iridescent black feathers, streaked with deep blue and purple, caught the sunlight. Her wingspan was as large as Walker's, but looked larger for the length of her feathers. Long, slightly curling tail feathers trailed behind her, at least a yard long. She usually perched above ground to show them to their best advantage, but her true glory was the massive ruff of head feathers. Streaked with purple throughout, they stood straight out from her head, like a fluffy turban, often obscuring her eyes and all but the razor-sharp tip of her beak. When one could see her eyes, they were shining onyx beads following every movement in her surroundings. For all her stunning, showy looks, she was still a vicious predator, not to be taken lightly. "'Who do you bring into my domain?' Kate perched along the edge of the carriage's roof. Technically, the domain belonged to Rosings, who tolerated Kate under most circumstances, but it never went well to mention that to Kate. Darcy dismounted and tied his horse to the luggage wagon. He approached Kate and bowed. "'I bring help for Pemberley, the one she has been crying for.' "'That heartless woman comes here. I will not tolerate her, abandoning a baby.' The coach door flew open, and a Grecian fury jumped out. Surely there were flames in her wake. Miss Elizabeth's bonnet was gone, her hair, unpinned and flowing loose behind her in cascading curls that reached below her waist. She held the edges of her cloak in either hand, "'How dare you! She was taken from me! I did not abandon her!' Darcy swallowed hard. Kate extended her wings and swooped to the ground. Elizabeth extended the edges of her cloak and bent slightly forward, matching Kate's posture. They circled, gazes locked on each other. Kate screamed, sending chills down Darcy's spine. Somehow Elizabeth matched the sound. He shuddered. Beside him, Gardiner lunged forward. No. Darcy stayed him. Coming between two females vying for dominance would only escalate the conflict. For all her pomp and show, Kate could be deadly. They would all be fortunate if no blood was spilt. Kate pecked at the ground near Elizabeth's feet. Any rational creature would have jumped aside. Elizabeth stomped near Kate's tail feathers. Walker circled overhead. Elizabeth, no! Kate squawked and took to her wings. She cawed at Walker and dove at Elizabeth. Elizabeth dodged, catching one of Kate's tail feathers as she did. Kate seemed to halt midair, screaming. No one, human or dragon, touched Kate's tail feathers. Elizabeth pulled her down with just enough force to ground her, but not pull the feathers out. Kate pulled up to her full height and rotated slowly, displaying her full glory in a sunbeam. Elizabeth raised the edges of her cloak and spun, her hair and cloak whirling behind her in a display equally glorious. A bead of sweat trickled down Darcy's temple. He ran a finger under his collar. Such a woman! She would probably be embarrassed to know he had been watching, but then again maybe not. Where dragons were concerned, she had shown little self-consciousness. Kate launched and folded her tail back. She was about to dive. Elizabeth ran three steps toward her and leapt at Kate, screaming and cloak wings flapping. How had she perfectly mastered a cockatrix shriek? Kate faltered and backwinged, retreating. Elizabeth held her eyes a moment longer, then dropped the edges of her cloak and stepped back. Kate landed at Elizabeth's feet, wings wrapped around her body, and touched the ground with her beak. Elizabeth brushed the top of her head rough with her cloak, a gracious and gentle acknowledgment of her victory. By all rights she could have decimated her rival's feathers, marking her as the inferior female for all to see. Rosings would approve, and Pemberley would only adore her more for her kindness.' 